How do you set up a new .NET project? I'm going to show you four things that I always add to my new project to ensure the long-term health and success of my application. We're going to take a minimal API .NET 7 project and we're going to set up the four things that are going to ensure the long-term health and success of this application. The first thing that we are going to add is configuration for our code style. How you do that in a .NET project is by adding an editor config file. The easiest way to add an editor config file is from Visual Studio, you can right click your project and you can say add new editor config. This is going to create an editor config file in your project. It contains many code style rules that you may want to enforce for your team. This is the default view for how an editor config file looks. Alternatively, you can view the raw file and I prefer this version because it's easier to figure out what's going on. For example, here are some configurations for the naming rules. Let's say interfaces should begin with an I. So if you want to enforce that, then you can define a severity here. Now, right now this says suggestion, but you can update it to say error. So if an interface does not begin with an I something, then your code style is going to throw an error. And there are a bunch of rules that you can explore here. I'm going to leave that up to you. This is the first thing that I'll typically introduce. And I usually have a ready-made editor config that I use in most of my project. So I just go ahead and import that one. So we have our editor config in place. The next thing that I like to add is static code analysis. Now it's really simple to introduce this. For example, I like to use the sonar analyzer package and you can install this one, which contains a bunch of static analyzers for C sharp. So if you install the NuGet package, you're going to get the static code analysis that is available with it. This package is useful for enforcing clean coding standards and it can also detect some bugs and vulnerabilities in your code and help you fix it before you run into an issue. It's going to be cumbersome to install this package in every project in your solution. So actually there's a better way to do this and I'm going to show you how. I'm going to add a new item to our solution and I'm going to call it directory.build.props. So let's add this file. Now this is an XML file and I'm going to paste some configuration inside. So this is what I'll typically add inside of my directory build props. There are some settings that I like to configure on the solution level, such as the level of analysis for my static code analyzers. And if I want to treat warnings as errors. Now, if you turn this on, any warnings detected by your code analyzers are going to cause a build error. So you'll have to fix any issues that you run into before being able to build your project. And I think this is a good thing to have. This also fixes what I mentioned earlier. You can define the NuGet packages that you want to include in all of your projects. And the one I'm including is the Sonar Analyzer C Sharp package. And now my web API is going to have this package installed. So I can go ahead and actually remove it from this project. So here is the NuGet package and I can delete it from here. And if I open up the NuGet packages that I have installed, you're going to see that the Sonar Analyzer C Sharp package is present. And this is because it's coming from my directory build props file. So this covers static code analysis. And let's jump into the next thing that I like to introduce in my new projects. And this is container orchestration. So I typically use Docker for my development environment. And I like to set up a Docker Compose so that everyone in the team can be running the same infrastructure. This can be databases, any external services that we are using. So the first step is to introduce a Docker file for your project. The simplest approach is again leveraging Visual Studio and we're going to add Docker support for our project. I'm going to target the Linux for our Docker containers and I'm going to let Visual Studio scaffold my Docker file. So this is what's going to be used by the Docker Compose to build an image for my web 
project. So I'm not going to dive into the details of what a Docker file is. The important thing here is this is just going to copy my project, run the build, and then publish the project so that it can be run inside of a container. A Docker file is just half of the story. The next thing is adding container orchestrator support. And I'm going to use Docker Compose because that's what I have installed on my system. Again, I'm going to target Linux and I'm going to let Visual Studio scaffold the required files. You can see we have a new project inside of the solution folder and this is the Docker Compose project and it's also set as the startup project and now you can run debugging by clicking Docker Compose. Now, if we take a look at the Docker Compose YAML file, which is how you actually set up your services, you're going to see that we already have one service for our web API. And now it's easy to introduce additional services like databases, maybe some message broker, you can even add Redis and so on. Let's say you wanted to introduce Postgres along with your web API. You can do something like this. So I'm adding another service, which I'm calling Project Setup DB. I'm specifying the image to be PostgreSQL. I'm passing in a few environment variables. Now this part here is important. I'm mapping a volume from the container which holds data for PostgreSQL into my file in my solution folder, which is called dot containers and then database. So this is how you can have persistent storage and not lose data every time you restart your container. If I start my project and open up Docker Desktop, you're going to see a Docker Compose container show up and it's going to contain my web API project, which is defined as the first service and then my PostgreSQL database. So this is an easy way to set up all of the services that you could need for a local development environment and you don't necessarily need to be running Docker in production. This is just for development. And the last thing that I want to introduce to my project is going to be logging. Now, I personally prefer using Serilog because I'm very familiar with it and it's a very robust logging library with a lot of external syncs. So let's go ahead and install it. So I'm going to look for Serilog and we can go ahead and install the Serilog ASP.NET Core package because it has really nice integrations with an ASP.NET Core web API. So I'm going to install this and now we have to configure it. How you can configure Serilog is by accessing the configure host builder instance and you can say use Serilog and now you need to provide a delegate to configure Serilog. The overload that I like to use is the one that has a host builder context instance and a logger configuration. My personal preference is configuring Serilog through application settings. So my setup ends up being configuration and I say read from and then I say read it from the application settings and I pass it the context configuration instance so that it can read my application settings JSON file. Inside of my application settings JSON file, I usually get rid of this logging configuration section here and I replace it with this one from Serilog. Now what this does is configures a few things. It adds the syncs that I want to use for Serilog, in this case the console and file syncs. It configures the log levels, in this case the default log level is information and anything lower than that will get discarded. And then there is some configuration for outputting my logs into a file. I want to highlight this part here that specifies the path of my log file. So because I'm running in a container, this logs folder is going to also live inside of that container. Now you may want to have access to your log files. So what you can do is go into Docker Compose and access the Docker Compose override file. For the development environment, you can add another volume here to specify that the logs folder inside of the container should map to the respective logs folder in your file system so that you have access to the log output from Serilog. This is how I set up my new .NET projects 
with an editor config file, static code analysis, Docker Compose and logging. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to smash that like button and until next time, stay awesome.